outro cast. How's your day going aside from answering the same questions over and over and over again from media people thinking that they invented those questions? You know what? I'm I'm grateful to be here because I've seen it. We've all seen it and they answer the same questions. So, so I think the new school of actors are trying to find innovative ways to answer the same question in a different way. Okay. That is right. a fair assessment and I'm <laughs> Now, before I talk about Warrior Strong, you were in a bunch of shows that the wife and I watched endlessly during the pandemic. Upload, one of my favorite shows of the past few years. Letter Kenny, one of my favorite shows in the past few years, et cetera, et cetera. So we've seen a lot of you in our household. Thank you for being you. And I appreciate Warrior it, Strong, man. I appreciate it. <laughs> I Warrior appreciate Strong not only has you, but one of our biggest obsessions, um, there's an Andrew Dice Clay 8x10 behind uh, us. Which one? Is it from the 80s? Is it from the 80s? It's from probably 91. 90, okay. And cool. I turn it where you see it a little above the TV. Uh, he's next to Little Richard. Oh, I see it. I see it right there. Boom. boom. Wow. Okay. Now, we're, we're, we're in good territory right now. This is good energy. Good people. We love the Dice Man in this this household he played in our town our town has a weird dive bar that has comedy in it now how far do you go back with the dice man oh did i lose you well well my dad watched him growing up so yeah so so but my my relationship with like like knowing who who dice man is was more so with Entourage. I saw him like in Entourage and Blue Jasmine. I saw him in A Star is Born. That's when I was like, oh, that's the same guy. And yeah, so it was more so when I got, God, damn, this dude is, you know, but he was, he was the first to, to sell up the Madison Square Garden. So it was, um, yeah, it was more so just knowing him from his actor's work. Not even more so. I knew, like, I knew he was the raunchy comedian and stuff like that, but I never, like, fully watched, like, a full set until I got the part, and I was like, man, this dude is is hilarious. I was honored. It was great. Like him, uh, you can straddle the lines between drama and comedy really well. You could work with a John Doerr, yet you could be in a RoboCop, and then you could do something like, like Warrior Strong, which has a lot of dramatic depth. Now, did you want to be a comedic actor at the beginning, a dramatic actor, or is it just anyone who hires me, I'll take it? Um, good question. So I started off just like as an actor. First of all, I started off playing basketball, and then I got into acting, and I trained with um, a train, uh, an acting coach named Earl Nanhu in Toronto. Shout outs to EVN Studios. But he was always like, as an actor, you have to have the range. You have to be able to play all the different, you know, notes on the piano so I I just trained knowing everything like comedy you know playing a lawyer playing a judge and then playing like a like a goofy pizza delivery guy like I've all I played all those things so when I got like a letter candy or an upload I'm that's more so me like just being like the goof like I can be that and then more so if you see me in suits, that's also me. That's like the business side of, of Jordan getting like the work done and, and me just sitting there writing notes all the damn time. Like that's and researching that. So I'm it's all me in some degree, if that makes sense. But yeah, I think some people haven't they don't know that I'm they kind of see my countenance and they're like, oh, he's very serious. I'm like, yo, I'm constantly riffing off jokes, bro. All the time. Yeah. Right. Now your credits do include being basketball player number five in the job. John Dor. <laughs> And every now and then I do find that when I'm interviewing an actor or a comic, they were a basketball player. I don't know if you know Pap Johnson, great stand-up comic who just put out a record through Kill Rock Stars, but uh, he also has acting credits as well. But he got in and he was able to be on the basketball team of the comedy store. Now, in your case, have you been able to ever parlay the basketball stuff into the acting besides the John Doerr credit? This honestly was the first time this this was the first full circle moment. I mean, it was my dream to play on the Lakers and for Bilal to be on his, the phone with his agent and say, man, I'm going to play for the Lakers, which they cut from the movie. But uh, <laughs> it was a, a full circle moment. And shout outs to, to you, Darren, um, and, and Paul, uh, Paul, how do am I say this? How am I? 
Paltrow, Paltrow cast. It's like when it's Paltrow with the it's at the end. So right, Paltrow. right. I love, I love that name. Very creative. But shout Thanks. outs to you for for even knowing that I was on John Door. That's you went way back in the vault to like pull that out, man. That's amazing. That's great. Well, I, work. I consider myself an honorary Canadian. Uh, one of go. the first publications that I wrote for was a Canadian outlet. And as a result, everyone thought I was Canadian. So when they flew me out to the Harvest Music Festival in Fredericton last weekend, and then I went to St. Andrews, wow. I consider myself, uh, again, if you will, an honorary Canadian. I, I, I allow it. There we go. <laughs> That's good. No, but no, Darren, on, with all honesty, man, uh, I think the, the coolest part about being able to, to do this movie and Shane told me this because the comedy, he, he, because he saw more of my dramatic work, he's like, you know, we got to really punch up the, the comedy. And and then when I was doing the comedy, he was like, dude, this is great. We got to punch up the drama. So I was like, which one, you know? So as you can see, I feel like if, if, you know, audiences are, are feeling the same thing when I, when I watch the movie, you, excuse me, you're seeing both. You're seeing like a real life kind of like ebb and flow of like what it is to kind of just be a human being. It's funny. It's sad. It's, you know, embarrassing. It's uh, a, a lesson. It's all of it. I I feel like, I don't know. Did you almost get the extra credit uh, basketball consultant? Because sometimes when you're watching sports films, you see like boxing consultant, fighting I, consultant. I, I did add a little bit of salt to it, a little bit of pepper, but I, that I can't give, that was more Aaron Brown. Aaron Brown was our, our basketball consultant that, yo, we rehearsed. Well, not really me. I, I had to, I, I got a little, a bligh on that, you know, um, but the players, the, the basketball team, they practiced for hours and hours before and after and during filming. So I showed up to a few to kind of, you know, Hey, how you doing? <laughs> like, you know, but they were the ones running up and down. So I think all in all, man, we just try to work together to make something that had everything. What's your position on the court? If I did play ball, I would be like a stretch four, a three, like a two, three, four. Yeah. Yeah. Did you choose that role? In other words, did you go, Hey, uh, I'm a Stockton guy or, wow. or did, did the coach go, this is what you're doing? Because I was very athletic. I was very athletic. So, you know, I, Th that was the best position because I could cover a, a big center or I can co cover a smaller defender um, or a, a smaller offensive player. And it was just more so I had the ability to to kind of just play all the positions, you know? So I think now it's in, in the NBA, it's getting more recognizable as like a stretch four and positionless basketball. I was kind of playing that back in the day. Franklin's probably laughing. My assistant trainer, my boy, he's probably laughing because he's like, dude, I dunked on you every time, you know? So no, but that's what it was growing up. Before music became my big thing, basketball was it for me as a kid. And I loved how bad centers were when I was growing up that very few centers could shoot anything that wasn't like right under the basket. Now the centers can do the threes and the, the ones can dunk. You know, that wasn't the case. Now the basketball player of today is very versatile. Mm -hmm. So I don't, you know, when you say that I do this, but this, but this, I believe it, whether or not Franklin does. Yeah, <laughs> right. And, and, and that was one of the things that Shane really talked about in the script was analytics, three point shooting. And we talk about that. And because that, that's the way of the basketball, like that's the way, you know, and that was the whole thing with Bilal and Andrew Dice's character, Avery Schmidt. They were arguing about his, you know, methods of coaching his team. He's like, dude, this is years. and ye This is like ice age type of stuff, man. You got to step it up and, and progress and move forward, move on from what you, you've been doing because you're going to fall by the wayside. <laughs> <laughs> so, so many of the basketball movies I watched growing up were about a coach, like the Whoopi Goldberg movie, Eddie. I would say that might be the worst coaching uh, in any basketball movie ever. Am I wrong yeah, about that? I, that's a classic. I mean, that's a throwback. I don't, I don't even remember the movie, but damn, that's a good, good movie. Wow. Yeah. That's a, that's a, I think the ones that I watched for this Sandlot, Coach Carter, 
people were talking about Mighty Ducks with this one. I think, uh, what was the other one that Shane, we've referenced a bunch, uh, a bunch of newer projects, but Coach Carter, remember, remember the Titans was another one that we referenced. Um, we wanted to make a movie that, that you can watch over and over every holiday with the family, with your friends. And I think we did that because, you know, everyone needs a good feel good movie every now and again. Well, two quick questions before I let you go. Yes, sir. And the first one is, obviously, Warrior Strong is the best basketball movie ever made. What's the second best one? Coach Carter. Hey, he can act that, that yes. gentleman. Yes, yes. Okay. Coach Carter. <laughs> and the last question for you, uh, are we allowed to know what's coming next from you? Or is it just all warrior strong all the time forever and ever amen that is the, the last movie or thing we'll see you in we i am working on my own original screenplay i also optioned a book and i'm working on that too so we i we have a whole team of people here at uh, our production team uh, at jazz night studios and we're working on all of those projects right now and truly man seeing warrior strong and the work through that partnership with Darius Films and, and Quiver Distribution, I think that's when I realized, like, man, I'm at that stage where it becomes a partnership. It's it's a collaboration. It's, you know, yes, I'm an actor for hire, but, you know, I can create, you know, and my team can create the whole the whole package. And that's what we're stepping into now, because that's where it needs to be. You got to create your own content. Congratulations on taking that next step to your Batista-like career, where eventually everyone forgets that you were ever an athlete for any reason. Ah. When you're starring, yeah, producing, writing, et cetera. So, hey, Jordan, really looking forward to what's coming next. And congrats on Warrior Strong. Thank you. And and one quick question for you, Darren. Where did Paltrow Cast come from? Where did Paltrow Cast, where did that name come from? And why? It was very creative, but how, what it, what inspired it? If, if I could ask, if I may. Uh, you may. And I mean, I to <laughs> talk about my personal life, so I don't I don't want to go there. But because it's you, uh, I was just thinking of what are the greatest brands in, in the world and the Paltrow brand. So hence why the unboxing videos we do are the Paltrow box, the, wow, the side nice. in the series Paltrow cast. I mean, I like Gwyneth, that. she's she can't own it. Right. There you go. No, that's legend, man. Thank you so much. That's a great answer. It's very intriguing. And, and thank you. I appreciate your time. And I love the interior design of your place. It's very nice. I just had to well, say I that. Well, tolerates the hoarding so you can do it. Well, hey, there thank you, you for being you, Jordan. Really looking forward to what's coming next, even if Franklin doesn't like it. <laughs> thank you, man. Have a good one. Outro cast.